Okay, hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and it has been a very long time since I uploaded any I'm actually on another e-bike as you can see right here It's the new Eco Ranger from Drive Bikes and they have actually came up to me and actually loaned me this bike for review So right in front of me we have the G-Move lookalike the Drive Ranger and uh, as far as it is it looks just as similar uh, like the gmove mc however there are a few differences and uh, without further ado let's go and uh, take a look at what this bike has to offer starting from the front right here we have these metal metal fenders and uh, back in the gmove mc this uh, fender will be plastic but this one is all metal so actually that's actually very good and over here we have the iconic drive ranger so yeah it shows the model and stuff and over here we have the controller the controller is like on top of the bottom bracket if it's the gmove mc it will be at the bot at the rear rack over here so it's a very small controller as you can see from the size over here and right here are the battery so battery was powered so this bike is powered by the silverfish battery 48 volts and 18 m hours and right at the back we have the rear rack similar like the gmove mc is actually you know being screwed on over here you can hold up to 15 kilograms and you may actually mount your delivery bag or basically your basket or any cargo behind as long as it's not more than 15 kilograms we have the rear light as well as the license plate so the rear light we will actually show alongside the front light later on it will actually function as a brake light as well which is very very popular with the drive bikes over here we have the battery connector so this is the one that's going to be connected to the battery port so it provides power to the controller in turn turning on all these electronic components of this bike and we have the crank arm right here very nice not so big and it's the iconic uh, it's very iconic with the drive version 2 it looks very similar it gives off this uh, drive version 2 vibes and over here we have the motor the 240 watt motor it's a 48 volt uh, 240 watt motor and we have the magnesium alloy rim set unlike most of the bikes that we've seen it's all spoke and yeah, this actually uh, reduces maintenance on the wheel set and also we have the fender that actually protects the battery as well as the you know any splashes that is going to be occurring on this rack right here so far over here same thing we have the magnesium alloy rim as well as this bike is actually a 14 inch uh, by 1.75 uh, 1.75 inches yeah so this bike may be very sh like very nimble and stuff much more nimble than the gmove mc uh, as you know gmove mc is actually quite you know like well known for being a bike that is not suitable for slippery surfaces maybe you want to change the tires of this bike to a wider one if this bike actually uh, tends to skid and this bike actually comes with hydraulic brakes comes with a pair of dy island which is one of the prominent uh, brands where e-bike manufacturers use and we have the limit screw over here for you know adjusting the travel of the levers and in turn the calipers right here as you can see the calipers are over here so cable management wise i am really impressed by it it's actually okay uh, but if you really want I would suggest uh, get the nylon wrap you might want to wrap this uh, completely make make it a bit more you know neat and stuff the back 
over here the controller is all good it's all sealed up so you do not need to fear about any you know water seeping inside but do keep in mind electric bicycles are not waterproof they are just water resistant so without delaying much more let's look at the you know the controller as in the controller display that is on your upper right so right now we are at the controller i have actually loosened so that it can actually swivel so you guys can see it better so to on this bike there's actually a power on button that is located on the top here as you can see hope you guys can see there's actually a button right here so you just have to press it and it turns on so the battery will actually flash on a little bit so let's take a look over here and we have the battery indicator on the left side on the bottom we have the pedal assist uh, mode this bike has five pedal assist modes which we will go later on on the right side we have the speed that the bike is going right now it's at zero kilometers per hour yes it is in kilometers per hour Below is the trip that is actually recorded throughout this bike's lifetime. Right now it's at 80 kilometers. So let's start with the pedal assist uh, modes. This bike is like G-Move MC where it has five assist modes. So to actually toggle it up, we have this plus and minus. Not sure you guys can see, but this is the plus and this is the minus. So in order to increase the pedal assist, we're gonna press the plus button so we are at five speed modes and to decrease we will press the minus button as such so and that's about it right now below the speed like i said the trip there are actually a few uh, perks that is actually uh, included in the bike so remember the power on button you just have to press once right now we have the odometer the maximum speed that is traveled the average speed of this bike the range the calories burned for some reason and this is the unique part the power output of the motor right now is at zero watts and it's self-explanatory because the motor is not even moving time as in I think is the duration of the runtime of the bike and that's about it so to on this light the front and the rear you just have to press this button right here and yep this is how the light looks like and I will actually write in dark conditions right now just to show how bright this light is it may look small but it's actually sufficient for usage and it's quite most importantly is to be visible and it lights up quite enough so that you may write comfortably so this is the front light over here we have the rear light so it's actually pretty bright it's just one led but with the reflector it actually just deflects the light so it spreads out apart and this bike like most drive bikes out there they actually has a brake light over here it will actually you know the, the light will actually light up but in this case it will appear brighter so let's see if it works okay right now we will be looking at the battery the heart of this bike so we actually have a key fob or try say the key to actually remove the bike i mean you move the battery from the bike itself so we have the seat right here you have to remove this seat and we have to actually turn this to the on position so that this part right here actually you no know, we track back so that the battery can be pulled up as such i will show later 
remove this part. And this is the battery. So let me just use one hand right here. So as you can see, the battery is by Silverfish. Yeah, it's a Silverfish battery, 48 volts and an 18 amp hour battery. I will actually include the watt hours and how many you know kilometers that you might or can achieve. But keep in mind, distance travel average is based on terrain and everything, as including the weight. So it's not that uh, it varies from person to person. So yep. Now I just have to place it back and just a fun fact, this battery is like 4.9 kilos, close to 5. So this is just uh, to let you guys know. Lah. So this battery is like 5 kilos. This bike is actually foldable like the G-Move MC. So to actually fold the bike, right, you will actually first you have to remove this pole right here. Make sure the pedal of this side is aligned with this uh, stem tube. Next, we have to pop out this lever. Not sure if you guys can see, but like this. Then we will do the knee jerk on the left side. But don't forget this kickstand right here. You have to pull it out. This hinge in the middle, we will give it a knee jab. And there you have it. So, if you want a trolley push, this is how the bike looks like. So, being a G-Move MC rider, this is actually the norm right now. And I heard from other reviewers that these two tires do not actually, you know, touch the ground. So you are actually, you know, trolley pushing with one tire. I think you can see from here lah. This tire and this tire is like not even, as you can see. But it will actually not affect the trolley pushing, which I will actually demonstrate now. In fact, I am actually quite comfortable with trolley pushing with one tire on my GBOOF MC. So I will usually like to grip it over here, but sometimes over here helps. Again, it's on personal preference. And then I will actually grasp this thing. And this one usually is at the hole here. Or if it doesn't have, maybe you change the seat, right? You may actually rest it at the back of the seat. And this one will actually help stir the bike. So this is how you push the bike. Lah. Again, this one is without the rack and everything. So, so this is how you trolley push the bike. Ensure that one hand is at the seat to support the weight. And that's about it lah for trolley pushing. And uh, if you want to actually you know, bring it to a car or something, you may actually want to re basically lower this seat. Then we have to actually lower this uh, stem. It's actually adjustable. So if you are appearing to be, you know, hunched for riding, you may actually push push this up to make sure your back is straightened. Actually, pretty good for those with you know back problems and stuff. That is similar. So we just, but in this case, we have to lower it like so. And this part right here, notice this thing right here. It actually holds this uh, latch in place so that it doesn't you know collapse when you are riding. So be careful when you were to install back. Make sure you don't lose this. Push it out away and pull this up.
So this is how the bike looks like when it's completely folded for storage. It's actually pretty small and yeah, it's almost the same size as G-Move MC. And yeah, special mention, this uh, kickstand is actually kind of sturdy, much more sturdy than the G-Move MC. And this one is similar to the Fido kickstand. And it's actually kind of stable. Uh. I mean, if you didn't put anything over here, this can actually last you. But if not, you may want to get a better one. Or you might want to get the, you know, the two, the basically the stand that is looking something like this. But uh, the pushing of the bike will be a bit more difficult if you were to use that uh, stand. If you want to tr trolley push it in the MRT. But I've used that on my G-Move MC. So far, it has not been any issue. Maybe it's due to experience or what. But uh, just to keep that in mind lah. And yep, here is the charging adapter for the e-bike. So the output is shown as here. And here is the input and the output. And this particular one has been certified. Make sure you use the, you know, the approved chargers lah. So right now this is a 2 amp, 2 ampere charger. It's a slow charger, the usual lah. The usual bikes that usual chargers that the e-bikes will come with when you purchase it and this may actually charge the 18 amp hour battery from flat to full in around 8 hours okay so the seat poles and the stem right regarding them the stem should be no issue it can actually be extended so that if you are a person that hunch hunches over when you are riding right you may actually just you know raise up the stem right here it's adjustable so that it doesn't hurt your back the seat post however is a bit short let me just take it up so if it happens that you are a bit taller than like 160 centimeters maybe you might want to actually change to a longer one so that your ride will be much more easier because this bike is actually pedal assist so having uh, your knees, you know, like, you know, less than 90 degrees and stuff like that is not going to be very uh, comfortable. So if you need to, you may want to change that. The saddle is a bit comfortable as well. It's actually kind of okay. Lah. But the seat post, however, you might want to change it if it's too, you know, short for you. Other than that, it's actually quite good. Lah. This bike... Uh, when it just came out from the you know the shop actually it's a very good bike actually yeah let me just uh get off first and uh, put on this clamp back so right now i'm at the multi-story car park i actually use this tower to actually film it so that i may actually get to experience how much or how fast this bike can go in between steep speed modes as well as its top speed so i may actually just uh, travel around here so and as well we get to use this time to actually do the night ride as well as the day ride so let's go actually pretty excited to actually use this bike now safety first helmet my phone i need to load up the speedometer app after a long time of talking finally i get to set this up and uh feel myself riding which is kind of exciting though so but first let me do on my helmet and here's my speedometer and let's turn on this lady up press the speedometer app and let's compare it over here. Right now I'm at uh, pedal assist 1. Pedal assist 1 shows me 13 km per hour max. But in the speedometer in my app is 11 km per hour. There are 2.
Gear 2 is at 16 km per hour. But uh, in my speedometer is 14 km per hour. But the assist free is at 19. But my app shows 17. Pedal assist 4 right now. Twenty two, twenty one km, twenty two kilometers per hour, but it shows twenty kilometers per hour on the speedometer app. Finally, the highest. The highest is twenty four point one, but it shows here as twenty, which I don't think is the case. Maybe the place here is a bit too small. Let's try again. Yep. On the speedometer, it is 22 kilometers per hour. So this bike is off by 2 kilometers per hour. It's time for me to actually do the day shoot as well as the night shoot. So let's head over to the PCM. I can actually test out these bikes. Max assist level, level 5 and the max speed somehow is at 24.1 km per hour. And after I hit that speed, it tends to cut off and on constantly. So that is something that must that the rider must you know get used to it lah. okay let me just make a u-turn right here so you can see being a small e-bike right this is one of the uh, advantages where you can just make a tight turn and you know make a detour or something like that so, oh yes uh, the brakes are basically hydraulic disc brakes it comes stuck with the bike and I really am happy that more e-bike companies nowadays, they incorporate hydraulic disc brakes, especially for the price that is being uh, stated and the weight limit that is being imposed. Like seeing how much uh, stopping, you know, braking power is needed to actually make this uh, e-bike to a halt pretty quick. And if you think about it, this bike retails at $1,000 and $600. It's a, yeah, basically it's $1,000 and $600. And you are not paying crap of an e-bike, basically. You get, what is that called? 48 volts. 48 volt system. It's actually a up-to-date one. And also, this particular bike also has a form factor. Basically, it's a foldable bike, but it is actually kind of annoying if you were to ride on the road every time. I don't recommend doing this on the road. I mean, riding this bike on the road like most of the time. Better just stick to the leftmost lane. If you need to, you can use the crossing just to be safe, yeah. Seeing the behavior of this bike is a bit suspicious. Lah. Going on the road with this particular e-bike, just stick on the left-hand side. If you want to cross to another junction, then I just use the traffic light. Lah. Cross over traffic junction there. Because this bike is very slow. 24 km per hour. It's not actually ideal lah, to do a... Maybe a one lane is okay, but uh, two lanes or three lanes, uh, forget about it. That's one of the caveats of this bike right now. Lah. So... This is the night ride for this particular e-bike and I choose this uh, time of the day so that I may actually cycle with ease and I have turned the lights on actually the lights are actually you know kind of decent right now there's a lot of lighting so you probably could not see much but uh, let's hit up the roads at Canada Road 
There's also a you know some slopes over there for this bike to try out. Right now I'm at pedal assist 5 all the way. Like seriously tell me who wants to travel at the pedal assist 5 on uh you know who doesn't want to travel at pedal assist 5? Nobody man. So I'm just gonna go full ham on it. Right now I'm traveling at 24.1 kilometers per hour. And the pickup on this thing is so real man, like it's almost instantaneous like almost when you when you were to pedal right like just when you start pedaling the bike actually starts to kick off i mean the 240 watt motor starts to kick off let me do a left turn right here and we are at otawa road And this has a bit of a gradient. Right now I'm at pedal assist 5. Like this is the maximum. And I am traveling at 19 kilometers per hour on the e-bike speedometer. But it is showing 17 kilometers per hour on the uh, speedometer on my GPS. And I hope you can see what's in front because the action camera on my bike or my the action camera right here is not that great. But I'll try my best to actually commentate what is going on. And the light is actually pretty okay la. It's actually pretty okay. Maybe I should test out this this DY Island brakes to see how it went from high to from the high speed to zero kilometers per hour. So what how I usually do is this. So I will press the rear brake and I will tap the front. Yeah, we'll do it now. Yep. Very instant. So this is how I do it. Pretty great. Good for you know emergency braking and stuff. See the kickoff is almost instant. Again, I'm traveling full speed on this kind of uh, on this kind of slope. So traveling on a slope like it's not a very daunting task for this uh, particular e-bike. And it matches up with the Rogi S Plus actually. And since this is a downhill slope, bro, right now I'm at 40 km per hour. And this is where the hydraulic brakes will come into play. So with a mechanical one, I don't think you can actually achieve this result lah. Go, go, go. See the, the kicking is instantaneous man. So with the G-Move MC, you have to cycle a few times. And then it will kick off. This one is, once you pedal lah, it will actually kick in uh, and this is actually a bit of a slope leg. And the speed is at 24.1 The high speed still which is very surprising This is the first time I had this experience And the motor keep like going on and off right It's actually It actually helps me actually uh, to be honest i mean when i during my day right i find it to be uh, very annoying but i find that like i find that 
when it turns on and off, right? It's like when you know when you are driving, right? You have this like inertia when you sometimes when you hit the accelerator, you have this inertia, right? It's the it's the exact same thing as what I'm experiencing on this e-bike right now, lah. It's just that it's not as strong, lah. It's like as if this e-bike has a turbo charger inside this uh, controller box right here. And uh, and I think I should call this uh, night ride to an end. I wish I can do a lot of rounds, but I will actually bring this e-bike out for a, for a spin in Yishun. Doing food panda tomorrow with a particular guest. I think it's a surprise, but I need my rest for that. Anyways, let's just uh, cut this uh, short, and I will need to do a debrief on this e bike. So, even though the Drive Ranger has a speed limit to 24 kilometers per hour on the speedometer uh, the bike actually has it's like the motor instantly kicks in when you start pedaling so that is a very good point when you were to move off from a junction or you were trying to you know clear any sort of uncontrolled junction that is that you may sometimes uh, stumble upon uh. also the fact that the bike can also you know conquer slopes at its high speed i think it's due to its uh, 48 volt system i but i know some 36 volt bikes actually do the same but that's what I heard from people. I'm not really quite sure. My Jimu MC actually struggles from slopes. So seeing the Drive Ranger conquering slopes very easily makes me really wanted to buy that bike. But uh, I really have a lot of sentimental value for my you know Jimu MC. So I decided to you know not to buy the bike. Other point is that for the particular price of the e-bike right you also get a very decent light set so you get a decent headlight and as well as a rear light which functions as the brake light as well a pair of dy island hydraulic brakes i think it has becoming it became a standard for all e-bike manufacturers to include such uh, benefits to their particular you know e-bikes and stuff you are not getting crap you see so you're getting a very good quality bike that is road worthy enough where you can cycle on the road like pretty easily the drive ranger has a very good form factor it reassembles the gmove mc in from the fact that the frame it looks almost similar and also when folded it also looks pretty similar as well so to me it feels like the drive ranger is well suited for those who really like the gmove mc aesthetics but they want an upgraded version of it seeing the mc pro is not foldable at all I'm not pretty sure if the Drive Ranger will be, you know, dangerous to ride on slippery surfaces because the MC is pretty, you know, notorious for people, you know, like skid off on a slippery surface. So I'm not really quite sure if the Drive Ranger can actually handle like slightly slippery surfaces. But if you want to, you may actually change out the tires to a thicker one. But keep in mind that your range will actually go down due to the rolling resistance. 
But if you are a daredevil, then by all means, stick with the 1.75 uh, inch thick tire. The Drive Ranger is much more powerful. It lasts longer than the G Move MC. So there will be another video where I will use the particular e-bike to actually you know do a grab shift from I think 5 in the afternoon until 8 in the evening so it will be a 3 hour shift so I would like to you know try out the bike and see how it functions in real time conditions on delivery usage maybe it also caters to commuting usage as well so that will be another video I would like to give a shout out to Guide to GrabFood for actually letting me the opportunity to you know try out the bike for like 3 days total it has been a very pleasant experience with the bike I really fell in love with it and also drive bikes for actually you know allowing the approval for sending this e-bike over as well as the delivery personnel who actually you know took all the time and effort to you know send this e-bike to my place to review so i really would like to thank all the parties involved and also i would like to thank the viewers which is you guys to you know take some time to watch this video and if you guys think that this video is too long for a review or maybe you want a first look of, a, of an e-bike and then another video will be will be for you know day shoot or night shoot please let me know in the comments because this particular review has been like around 40 minutes which is unheard of lah for a review so if you guys have any suggestion there's a comment section below please just uh, you know suggest how you would like future e-bike content to be like so that I can you know publish more quality ones out of the way i hope you guys are doing good stay safe and happy earnings this is heartland hustle signing off